All right, guys, so welcome back. And although people sometimes do these reveals, even though if they do a good job and they don't clickbait anybody, you can see whatever they're looking at uh, before from the description in the thumbnail. But today we're going to be looking at the Yamaha M-80 power amp. This is a power amp from the, I believe, 86. I have to retest this because a fellow brought it back. He wasn't happy with it. I'm just making sure that nothing's wrong with it. Uh, it's also pretty heavy, so I don't want to move it around too much. I don't think I have the framing quite that good this video. I'll probably zoom in a little bit or have to zoom out because we need to put speakers around it. So let me grab the Orion Blue Book. You see my previous videos. I'm doing this at the stereo shop in Williamsport. The boss said it was okay for me to do it. They have an Orion Blue Book. It has values of these devices and some info on them. Uh, this book in particular is from 2003. Is this gonna be under receiver? Is this gonna be under power amp though? All right, they do have a power amp section in this book, but I do not see the M80 at all. They don't seem to have any other section in this book that it would be in. So I guess we're not gonna find out the info that way. I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera at the moment. I'll probably have to turn off the lighting later, but this does have red meters and red lights. Uh, I'll probably turn that off once we actually plug in some speakers and let you guys see it. So this thing is heavy. I'll give it a little turn around like usual. We did pair it and listen to a pair of Yamaha, I think they were NS100 monitor speakers. So on the back, nothing too crazy. There's a ground in. I don't exactly know what that's for. Uh, this probably was made in Japan. Yeah, made in Japan. And then for inputs, we have two RCA connections, left and right, so RCA stereo. We do have three speaker outputs. Fortunately, this unit's seen better days. So the C connection, the units are knocked kind of loose and it's not easy to just get in there and pop them back in and screw them in place. Uh, the good thing is though, I've tested those, they still do make a connection. So you can actually still plug in a C set of speakers. Those are just loose kind of. We do have an outlet on the back. We do have a place to reach the screw. Basic info on which homage you can use depending on if you use A and B speakers or A and C speakers or a combination of any of them. We'll just be sticking to eight ohm speakers as usual for this video. Uh, we do have some meter buttons and this unit does have another issue where sometimes these buttons don't fully engage for the meter display. Everything works besides that. But sometimes they just don't. And this should be, and down here are the buttons for the ohm loadage. We're gonna keep it on eight ohms because we're gonna use eight ohm speakers. And then there are two knobs for the left and the right channel, A, B, and C speakers. That's so we're only gonna be doing one in this video. There's an auto class A button. I'll leave that unengaged for now. Boy, that thing is not light, so we're not going to be looking around. I'm going to go grab the meadows like usual. We're going to plug in something to stream to it and get going. I almost always forget to add these in. It's not as good of a shot because I'm using my phone. Or is it, it might be a better shot. But you have the little hole here to kind of stick speaker wire in. So it has to be narrow enough. And then you just kind of screw it in. It looks like a banana plug could fit in there, but I, I couldn't get it to fit. So... That's how it connects. Okay, so we have the metas hooked up like usual. And I did turn off some of the backlights and you can kind of see the meters and stuff a lot better now. We got it on eight ohms because that's what the speakers do. Just careful, be careful of ohmage in general. If you don't know what you're doing, check and check online about what the best thing to do is depending on the ohmage of your speakers. And then we are gonna do Dan Mason as usual because I can use his music. Make sure my volume is up. So I'm using my phone and Tidal to play music at the moment. Um, keep in mind, power amps usually don't have volume controls for the channels. So you want to usually start low if you're plugging a direct source in. Uh, especially if it's a CD player or something with no volume control. Because that will play at full blast. I'm getting meters but no audio, so maybe I did plug in something in wrong. Alright guys, so I made a pretty goofy mistake on the back I showed you. It was actually the A speaker connection that was kind of messed up. And it's the C speaker and B speaker that are okay. I have it plugged into C right now because that was the one on the right that is in good condition. 
one with the center channel still in good condition. Uh, they all work, it's just it's easier to plug it into one that's not messed up. So I had the wrong speaker set up. So guys, what do you think? I have to start opening up the store here and making sure everything's okay. 
Uh, let me know what you think about the Yamaha. Please keep in mind as usual that I am using a microphone that is not the best recording mic. And then two, this is YouTube, so there's going to be audio compression. It won't sound exactly like it would in person, so hopefully it gives you at least an idea about the amp. Uh, let me know what you think about the amp itself, if you have any experience with it, if you've ever used one, if you like them, if you've owned one. Uh, sorry, I bumped the mic. Uh, I also apologize if my voice isn't clear at each section. I am using a microphone, uh, a gun mic, on the camcorder, so my voice might be a little different depending on the location that I'm standing at. And yeah, let me know if you want me to go over anything in the background here while the store is still open. I want you guys to stay safe, take care, and I will see you again soon enough. Bye for now.